Bobbers, bobbers, bobbers. Now, when we think about bobbers, a lot of times it conjures up memories of probably the most basic type of fishing that you can do. A cane pole, fishing line, little bobber, down to a hook, a little worm on it, catching bluegills, crappie, bass, and stuff like that. And it is, it is probably one of the most basic styles of fishing that you can do. However, utilized correctly, it also can be one of the most effective ways of catching fish. And this video is going to be how I've adapted that to saltwater fishing. Now to get out of that mindset that these little bobbers are really only for the rookie novice fishermen trying to catch bluegills and crappie, let's talk about a fish like a tarpon. All these little things are all tarpon rolling all around it. I don't want to have anything to do with my, oh, I think we might have got one. Now, I don't think anybody's gonna talk down about a 100 pound fish, even if they are caught on a little bobber like this. Now, if you've been watching my videos, especially the tarpon ones, you'll notice last year, my main strategy for catching the tarpon was using live mullet. I have been and I was a live mullet guy. That was my go-to way of uh, catching tarpon. Well, this year I made a, a choice to try a different type of strategy basically to improve my arsenal of catching techniques. And that was to utilize these guys and primarily using them in conjunction with live pinfish. And if you can see by my results, I did really well. And I'm very happy that I've got that added to my arsenal. So down the road, if I wanna mix things up or possibly uh, one type of system is not working, I have something else to fall on just depending on the conditions. Because like anything else, fish are fish. They change their minds and they change their feeding habits. So the more you know, the better chance you have at catching them. Now I will admit, I was one of those guys. I used a bobber probably for as long as I can remember uh, from dropping a bobber with a worm to catch bass to salmon eggs or uh, power bait to catch trout. Recently, uh, I utilized these very expensive plexiglass Similar to shape like this, the long style. I, I couldn't dig it out, but uh, it, back in California on the American River, I would use those to drift a uh, row, which was basically brine salmon egg sacks. And the way it would work is that you would set them up like a slip float so that the bobber would be set so much at, with a, so much line hanging down that the row sack would just basically bounce along the bottom because it was suspended, it wouldn't get snagged in all the rocks and, and bottom uh, structure, and it would just bounce along. The salmon would just sit in the current along that bottom and just sit there, and whenever they would see the salmon row eggs dropping by during the spawn, they would go up there and crush them because it's kind of one of those deals where you want your own to survive, so you kill everybody else's. But uh, I would catch 15, 20 pound salmon in the rivers just by using that system. Now let's take a look at some of the bobber setups that are used primarily for saltwater fishing. However, most of these can be kind of just quickly converted to be used for freshwater as well. Now there are three distinct basic benefits of using a bobber. One is the added weight that it gives to be able to cast longer distances. So let's say you have a smaller bait like a small live shrimp or a small artificial bait or even like a fly and you need to get that bait out farther where the fish are whereas just the bait by themselves is not enough weight to get good casting. Add a little weight like this and you've got enough weight where you can really chuck that bait pretty far. 
Second, which would probably be what most people kind of conjure up in their minds is the strike indicator properties of having a bobber. It's floating on the water, bloop, it goes down. You know you've got a bite, time to set the hook, okay? Extremely beneficial, especially when you're first starting to learn to fish, so you're not having to worry about having that perfect uh, line tension so that you can identify those bites and keeping the slack out and knowing when to let the fish run and when to set the hook, okay? That ability to see the actual action really helps out. Now, the third and most important, in my view, is the ability to control that depth of the bait, okay? So since you have that float set with a distinct number of uh, distance between that, the bobber and the bait, you know exactly where in that water column that bait is going to be. And that is so hugely important depending on what fish that you're, you're chasing after. Uh, some fish, like the salmon, are bottom feeders. They stay on the bottom. Uh, you have fish like the trout or tarpon or uh, any fish that has an upward facing mouth, they like to feed from bottom up. So it's important to get that bait in the middle or upper water column. By having that bobber and setting it up correctly, you're almost guaranteed to have that bait in that strike zone the longest amount of time versus just throwing a bait out. You don't know how long it takes for, to get from the top down to the bottom where the strike zone is at. You don't know if you're, when you're using a live bait, that bait might be kicking and swimming to the top when the fish are on the bottom or vice versa. It might be bottom in the rocks and there's fish can't get to it. So by having that control, you have that ability to, like I said, is just always be in that perfect spot wherever you feel that fish is going to be. Now, you know those big 50 foot, 60 foot, 70 foot uh, sports fisher boats, those million dollar boats out there fishing those million dollar sailfish uh, tournaments. You know which bobber they use? This one, this little guy. And what they utilize it for is to catch ballyhoo. Now, of course, it's easy to throw a cast net on ballyhoo. The problem is, is that it really beats them up and they tend to die. So what a lot of them will do is when they, they'll keep a separate uh, live well of just hand caught Ballyhoo. And what they do is they just get some basic, like a trout rig with some four pound test line, put on a little tiny bobber like this, small little gold cook with a little piece of shrimp on it, drift that back into the chum line and pick off the Ballyhoo one at a time. I actually use these a lot for my night fishing for tarpon using live shrimp. Uh, at nighttime, I can't use any light because it just basically shuts down the, the bite, but I use this tiny bobber, it does two things. One, it allows me to control that bait so I can see what's going on, where the bait's at, where my line's at, because free lining a tiny shrimp at nighttime on a bridge is impossible, okay? And then the other thing is that I can tell where that bait is by the feel of it, because this will cause enough drag on the line that I know when I'm in the water, when there's slack and so forth. So really good there. Now on the other side of the spectrum, I actually usually have some larger one than these, but I actually lost them all. But I love these bobbers because they have that quick hookup ability where you press the button, the hook pops out, you stick the line on there, let it go, and it's set. And that's all there is to it. You can just, wherever you want it, boom, put it on and you're done. Uh, I use those for the tarpon fishing when I have them. Problem with them though is that clip isn't very strong and tarpon are strong and that first violent head shake and then running through the water uh, tends to rip these things off the line and then I lose them. But excellent, excellent uses for just the old school red and white bobber. Now the most utilized bobber that I personally use are these foam styles and they're a bit larger for the bigger baits that I throw. Um, I'll even use them for mullet when I need them to use them as an indicator where that bait's at, but mainly for the crabs, pinfish, the grunts, and drifting those in the current or just letting them sit out there in the open water. Uh, these really come in handy. Bobber, circle hook, no wire because I forgot the wire, <laughs> but that'd be okay. Just in case I might get a tarpon as well. And we'll get ready to throw that out. All right, we're just gonna lob this dude out there, see what happens. Maybe get a shark, maybe get a tarpon. 
We shall see. First victim on. Not a tarpon, but shark will do. All right, so looks like this guy is going to be dinner. Now there's a couple kinds. This one is actually a weighted. It's got a lead weight in the bottom, so it'll tend to sit upright and keep it straight up and down. Where this one is not weighted, so a lot of times without any pressure of the fish, it'll just basically just drift on top. Neither one makes any much of a difference except that they do is just keep that bait, like I said, from swimming down or away from the bobber in that specific strike zone. They come in different sizes and the way you basically can hook them up is two different ways. One is that you can use them as a slip-on where you basically have the cut along the side, take your fishing line, put that into the cut, and put it whatever distance away from the hook that you want it. Then you can just take the little plastic straw, put it back in there, and that tension of that plastic straw against the foam keeps the line in there, and that's how it's basically attached. The other way is that because these straws are basically hollow, you could run the line through them and just have some sort of a, a stopper wherever you want the bobber to end up with and then you can use it as a slip bobber for casting. So the, uh, the bobber will sit with the down by the hook or the bait. And then when you cast it, it'll slide up and stop and that bait will be down at whatever height that you want it to, making it a lot easier to cast. And just a slight variation, same basic foam as the flotation style, but just different rigging capabilities. This uses a loop with a wire on either side, a swivel, so that you, you physically tie the line to the bobber, and then you tie your leader length, exactly the length that you want it, to the bottom, to the hook. So you're basically just running this uh, bobber in line. I do like it because uh, you you put it exactly as it's one continuous part. There's no slippage that you have to worry about. The only negative factor is, is that once you start cutting down that leader, like I catch a tarp in, I usually have to cut off six inches to a foot of line that gets chafed. And then instantly that leader length is the wrong length and I have to cut it off and start again with a new size leader. Uh, this one is just strictly a hollow through and that's similar to like running it through the straw. You just have some sort of a bead or maybe you would run a, uh, a swivel in line and then that swivel would become the stopper. Next we've got the balloon. Now I utilize the balloons when I'm using large strong baits. Uh, go out to the reef or offshore and using a uh, bonita or maybe a blue runner, speedos. Just larger, more powerful baits that would take these bobbers and just suck them under. So you can basically just blow these up to your desired size, tie the knot but with the uh, line within the knot wherever you want it to, and you're all set. When that fish hits it, it'll actually have enough strength that usually it'll pop the balloon, and you're off to the races. I'll also utilize the balloons when I'm using big cut baits for sharks just because the sheer size of the chunk of meat I'm throwing out there, uh, you need a larger balloon style to keep it up at that desired uh, depth. And lastly, we've got the popping corks, basically. Uh, what these are is they're also used to control the bait depths, but they're also utilized as a fish attractor. With all these beads and weights, and it creates a rattling noise, such as this, like this. And what that's supposed to represent is basically fish crashing on bait. So what you'll do is you'll tie these in line, you'll have your bait that you want at your desired height, you'll cast it out there, and every once in a while you'll yank on the line which causes that kind of a pop on the water, it causes that gurgling water, and then makes that little sharp crackling noise. And what that does is that attracts other fish that are like, ooh, food, ringing that dinner bell. 
they come and you've got your nice bait just dangling right below it and they'll come up and grab that bait. And I've got all these, which are just variants of the other style bobbers, do primarily the same thing, just different designs, different uh, uh, sizes, but uh, relatively do the same things. Now, when to use the bobbers. Now, a lot of times you'll hear when, especially like, for example, when I'm on the reef, I'll talk about, oh, I'll be using this on my bottom rod, and then I'll have this one I'll be having on my top rod, and then I'll have my yellow tail rod. Now, I'm a big believer in multiple rod setups to increase your odds for catching fish. So I'll, I'll, most of the time, will have multiple rods, but when I'm talking that top rod, bottom rod, I'm talking about the bait placement. So my bottom rig is generally a knocker rig with some sort of bait pinned to the bottom, it's going after those fish that are feeding on the bottom. My top rod will be some sort of uh, bait sitting right on the top of the water column or on the surface, like a, like a live ballyhoo or the speedos or uh, anything, just mullet, so that they're just right along the surface going for those predators that like to feed up or on the surface. The bobber does basically is exactly that, how it fits in, where you want that bait placed. And what it does is it allows you to hit all three parts of those waters, the top, mid, and the lower water column. So I'll use a bobber a lot of times when I might be throwing an artificial, but I'll have a bobber out just floating there at whatever, with the bait at whatever water column I want just out behind the back of the, the kayak or off the back of the boat, just on the side, out of the way where I'm regularly fishing. If I'm yellowtail fishing, drifting bait straight back, I'll throw a, a Speedo or a whatever, a Blue Runner on a balloon and have it out towards the side just swimming out there. Okay? It just increases your odd and when you're utilizing a, a bait on a barber, there's really low maintenance. You're not having to hold the rod and watch it that bobber will keep it suspended and in place so you don't have to worry about it. You can glance over and you can see exactly where it's at, that it's okay, that it's still moving around, that the bait's still on it. So it's a, just a very low maintenance, very effective tool to add to your arsenal. So anyways, I hope that helps you out. I would highly recommend to, even though, and get out of that mentality, oh, that's for beginners, that's for those crappie and bluegill people that don't know how to fish, okay? It's such a huge aspect for saltwater that is way underutilized for especially for those people coming from freshwater to saltwater to not understand how it is important to have those multiple bait setups and fishing those different uh, water columns. So anyways, hopefully you learned something about that. Uh, have any questions, throw them in the comments, but otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.